Good evening. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I didn't mean to frighten you, my dear. What brings you out here? After all, it's the middle of the night. A lover's quarrel. Or perhaps you're running away. No? Hmm. Well, very well then. Enlighten me. Don't worry. I uh, won't tell a soul. I see. You come here often then, I assume. Thought so. Don't be embarrassed, my dear. I assure you, I understand. I mean, look at the harbor this evening. It's calm, still, not a soul in sight, except of course yours. <laughs> Would you like to sit with me? I know many of us don't care to talk to a stranger, but maybe we can both have a change of heart just for tonight. Lovely. Yes, the moon does look nice, doesn't it? She's certainly a sight to behold. <sighs> Although, I'm afraid I'm not able to appreciate her as much as I once was able to. After all, and Eternal marriage is bound to grow stale. Or rather, bittersweet, I should say. I still love her. And the night. But it's, uh... It's complicated. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't expect you to understand. Please, just ignore my rambling. And... Let's indulge in a conversation which will be more fruitful for the both of us. Tell me, is there anything particular you'd like to speak about? Remember, my dear, when one speaks to a stranger, they throw their words away to the passing wind. I have no use for your stories, nor do I possess any ill motives. Your words are forever safe with me. <laughs> ah, the most important of questions. Who are you? <laughs> but also, the most complicated of questions. You see, I... I used to be an abundance of things. I was once a child teenager. A man. I was also a fisherman. In fact, uh, that boat over there, it once belonged to me. Although I don't have the slightest idea who owns it now. Yes. Strange, isn't it? How could an important piece of information such as the ownership of my vessel Slip my mind. I guess one could say it was taken from me. I loved my boat. Along with her missing floorboards and tattered sails. And I served her well by taking her out to sea each day, no matter the weather. She never gathered dust under my care. But one day, well, a storm passed over and she, <sighs> she slipped right through my fingers. Everything did. <laughs> my boat, my family, my friends, my entire life. 
I felt my blood freeze in my veins as I watched the rain wash away everything I once held near and dear to my heart. It was all his fault. He... <sighs> I... I don't know. I... I can't remember his face. What I do remember, though, is the sting he left behind as he stole my life. He stole my summer, my sleep, my patience, my joy, my time, and even my death. All in one night. Tell me, can you imagine what it's like to indulge in the comfort of winter, but never the fruits of summer? To feel glad knowing your loved ones can sleep away the night not yourself. No longer can I bask in the sun. Instead, I am bound to the night. A lady who is as still as the time I walk through. You can't imagine it, can you? Well, I'd prefer if we kept it that way. <laughs> No, my dear, I, I don't have the slightest clue who that man is. The authorities won't be able to catch him either. He's long gone now, I'm afraid. I appreciate your concern, though. It's, uh, it's nice to see that some people still have a heart. You want to ask me something? Well, by all means. Don't be shy. My teeth. <laughs> ah, yes. They do look sharp, don't they? You haven't seen teeth like this before, have you? I thought so. Would you like a closer look? It's the least I can do to sate your curiosity. Yes, yes, they are quite predatory. I hope it's not too frightening for you. After all, I'm here to make a friend, not to scare you away. You aren't scared. Well, that's, that's good to hear. It's best if you hold on to that courage. I hear rumors of these so-called creatures of the night stalking this very town. You could run into one and be none the wiser. Have you read Bram Stoker's latest work? Dracula, he calls it. I believe his novel has played a great part in these rumors as well. You see, the people here have used this story to fuel their imaginations. Some say these nocturnal creatures prey on the living. Or rather, the blood of the living. They tiptoe through the moonlit streets and hide within the shadows, waiting for some poor soul to stroll by. And when the time is right, they drag them away into the endless night. Their victim will fight back, their pulse will quicken, but that just makes them all the more appetizing. Finally, their poor heart will continue to race inside their chest until it stops their soul finally devoured with no scraps to be spared. Their mortality drained like a sweet wine. These are only rumors, of course. Words I've heard in passing. Many people have disappeared this past month. 
but who's to say it's the fault of the supernatural? There's been a handful of murders as well, but once again, can one really blame this on the beings from another plane? Spirits? Monsters? You say people have awarded these creatures with a name. Please, enlighten me. Vampires. <laughs> well, looks as though Mr. Stoker really has left an impression on the kind people here. But I can assure you, at this very moment, that these creatures are no mere vampires. They lack the, the class and chivalry of a vampire. There's no wealth either, no grand castles, masquerades, no forbidden pleasures or romance, nothing of the sort, my dear. These vampires the people speak of look just like you and me. They can hold conversations, even carry them. And they maintain their sharp wit and their charisma. Despite all this, they are as empty as the very harbor. Hollow shells of people who once smiled in the face of mortality, but now frown in the face of death herself forever married to the night. Till death do us part, they say. What a cruel joke. Some lose themselves in their eternal solitude. They go mad, almost primitive. Those are the ones who prowl the streets like hungry animals who can't seem to figure out which way their moral compasses are pointing. The arrows just seem to spin. Though there are some who try to maintain their humanity. They pretend to sleep. They walk under the sunlight in their cloaks. They write, they read, they invest, they travel, they buy property. Some even continue to pray. It works, for the most part. They maintain their footing in the mortal world despite its obvious disadvantages. But the damage is still done. The die has been cast, and it's only a matter of time before they give in to their hunger. The hunger makes them ill, both in soul and in body, and it causes a great deal of pain. If their hunger is not sated, then it continues for eternity. At that point, it becomes a matter of time before they go mad and rip apart anything with a heartbeat. These are the creatures you're up against, stalking through the night and lurking through the day, blending in with the innocent. You look nervous. Are you feeling well? Ah, you've figured it out, haven't you, my dear? My sharp teeth, my ill appearance, the strange emptiness in my eyes. You know exactly what I am. Don't think I haven't noticed your hand moving towards that bulge beneath your coat. Let me guess. A steak? Perhaps a crucifix, or maybe a bag of garlic. 
I admire your effort, but I'm afraid it is all for naught. You see, it was never my intention to harm you. All I did was give a stranger a warning. That is the only sin that I've committed tonight. I do not want you to face the same curse as I have. And yes, I may be hungry, and I'd be lying if I said my mouth didn't water when I first smelled you down the way. But like I've already said, I'm here to make a friend, not an enemy. This town has faced enough torment. Many good people have died. So why don't we attempt to change things and tread across that line which divides the living and the undead? Just like the two of us have done this evening. I see you're still nervous. It's okay. I understand. It must be frightening, yet at the same time confusing to be sharing a conversation with a blood-sucking creature of the night. It's the same as a person holding a knife above your chest, yet they never strike you down. It's unpredictable, and that's what makes it scary, isn't it? Hmm. If it will calm your nerves, then I shall leave. Like I've said before, I don't expect you to understand my woes. But you have already done me the honor of simply listening. And for that, I am grateful. I, I feel as though Shelley puts it into words quite nicely, though. Then, thou wast lovely, mild and gentle. Now thou art terrible in jealousy and unlovely in my sight, because thou hast cruelty cut off my loves in fury till they have no love left for thee poetic isn't it the way the heart can rot when the night cuts off your love for the day one will eventually lose their love for the night my apologies i shall bore you no longer i must leave Remember, my dear, if you ever need, you can always place your full faith in a stranger by the harbor. A mist will be rolling over the town shortly, so I suggest you make your way back home where it's safe. But for now, I shall bid you adieu. Take good care of yourself. I'm not the only one present this evening, and the others are not so friendly, so it would be best if you avoid straying away from the path. <laughs> That's good to hear. Farewell, my dear. Until we meet again. <laughs>